We are live. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Cause and Effect podcast, where we introduce the cause and effect relationships that exist in golf in relation to the hand to handle to club relationships. Uh, this is episode ten, which is which is pretty awesome. I mean, yeah. when we when we first started this, uh, I know we say this every episode, like, wow, we didn't think we'd get through this many. Uh, I saw a cool stat where it said if you get over twenty episodes in your podcast, you're the top ten percent. In terms of like the percentile, in terms of podcasts, well, like yeah, 90, fifty and a oh, few. Oh yeah, like absolutely. So it's just sure. this is just the beginning, yeah, uh, for sure. And uh, again, we always preface this by just saying thank you for all the support we've been getting yeah. on all of our social media channels and our Discord's been didn't been popping. Um, <laughs> we're yeah. we're gaining we're gaining more more people each and every day, which is which is awesome. Um, and yeah, the Discord's fun. I mean. We always start the podcast out by saying, if you're not a part of the Discord, like you're missing out. Like right. you, you get a free swing assessment. Um, we're we're helping people. Like mm-hmm. it's it's a fun it's fun too. Like you, you normally the um, kind of communication between student and coach is just kind of one sided, where it's just kind of send the swing, boom, and then it's done, and you never really hear from them again until you sure. send their swing again. But with the Discord, um, it's it's much more personal and. Um, yeah, we got good conversation going and I don't know, like when, when you're going through like swing changes, it's nice to know that like you have somebody else like there with you. Yeah. You know? There's like, like a group of people going through the same people. thing. Right. It's but like going a, through the same types the journey. of things, but also those, like learn, learning the same language. Exactly. The so, language. Yeah. yeah and it's and, like building that kind of the community. So good. And that's a good is, segue into what we're going to talk about, yeah. which is we've been working on our archive videos. We we've talked about this a lot. Um, it's the claw code, it's the language of how to communicate with the golf club coming very soon. Um, we're actually, um, starting the final, like filming tomorrow yep. on those, uh, which is, which is really exciting. I mean, we, we put a lot of thought into this and there's right. been so many just iterations of what, I mean, the golf code is basically became the claw code, right? I mean, right. it's basically just, we, we've changed it many many the name times already and, taken too technically so yeah right, like, yeah. right exactly um but we've really just kind of went through all these different versions of like what we thought would be the best language of like how you should communicate with your golf club just right? to understand breaking everything down from the hands to the body to the club relationship and right. so like what the hands do to the club it's like that is like the hand language Right. And then there's the club language, which is like the output from the hand input. Yes. And or the right. claws, you know, however you want to say it. But um mm-hmm. but understanding it in that way is big because people I don't think understand how again the hands are their own unit and then the club is its own unit. Right. And the hands have a certain effect on what it does. Right. And once you break it down in a simple way, it's basically when you see the archives. There will be like three things your hands do, three things the club does. Right. And then that's Guaranteed. where it kind of exactly which gives you the guarantee. But it makes it simple, though. And yeah. um, and like we've always said, too, it's for every grip type and for any person. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, five years old or you're 75 years old. Right. Like our, you know, program is going to be, you know, easy for everyone to learn. And we'll have that out soon. And, um, and then it's, all, it's, it's all tested, too. Like we right. when we went through, I mean, just to kind of give a little background. I mean, when Jonathan and I first started this company, um we had the intentions on creating um, a smart club, basically, which right. would sense basically taking how this you're thing and putting exactly them, putting yeah. like sensors in it. Mm-hmm. And we ha- we have patents on all that now because that was going to be the original route we were going to go. We've kind of switched more into a kind of a media pivot now, where we're starting to kind of build the brand a little bit more. Correct. Before right. then, we launch our hardware and it all the ways to we measure gotta, this. Yeah, we want we yeah. want people to realize like we're not just another club company coming along doing like a smart grip attachment, which is really cool and the like the best thing out there. Yes. But at the same time, we want people to understand that like our character is bringing the club to life, yeah. the course to life. Like that's really um the main like environment. So it's like we're gonna show you that. And it's really have, just like it creates this more. Will come. Yeah, it creates yeah. now we're kind of building a awareness around everything that we're doing with right. the grip. So it's how like, you navigate through the new world of like cloth or yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. exactly. And right. that's why I mean you're gonna see with our with our videos and everything that we're doing is that the driving range environment that you're gonna kind of watch these videos on it's it's gonna be way different than anything you've ever seen before. So it's a golf lesson experience like you've never really it's my had. abstract <laughs> art, basically. Yeah, is exactly. like kind of the idea. And then yeah. we had to animate it and that's how we brought it to life. But the cool thing though mm-hmm. is again is that we have a lot of different avenues too on top of this like gaming and stuff like that that mm-hmm. we're going to bring to the table. So yeah. what's nice though too is that um 
Ethan's actually moving back here close to where I live. Yep. Um, so we're going to be closer and we're going to be able to do more Grinding. of these podcasts. We're going to have like our studio going. So everything is going to be getting more escalated going forward. Absolutely. It's been kind of, this summer has been tough. It's been tough. I mean, right. I, I've been, I mean, consistently teaching. Right. Um, it's been, it's been a very, very busy uh, summer, just balancing everything with trying to grow claw, trying to, to sell my clientele and my current students uh, so yeah, it's just been tough kind of juggling sure. that, but right. now it's like, okay, cool. Fall and winter, it's, it gets a little colder here in Michigan. So <laughs> yeah, we're going to have more time to get all this more out. More time so. to kind of work on everything. We got our simulator. Um, so you'll see a lot of content with that. Um, like course vlogs. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. I got to get you well, actually, I got to get you actually playing golf because you yeah, have no. not played golf this year. My art job uh, has been too much and yeah. physical issues <laughs> with the art job kind of make it a thing, but right. it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you got to full grind out like your one Absolutely. avenue and then you know golf is more of a thing at this point in my life where it's not about me getting out and playing it's like i'm just trying to express the knowledge that i know about yes, the golf swing and correct. get that out because that's what's most that brings important. you more joy than like before when you were playing golf like before right. playing golf was like that's all you really want to do now it's like okay we're trying to fix golf right. now <laughs> i'm fixing golf right that's yes. the key thing right right we would you talk to the other day and we're like okay golf instruction is definitely broken like it's we're, so, like, we're watching it's, all yeah, these tour it's... players we're watching all these coaches and again we're not saying that they're right no, or wrong right it's just um i think they're overlooking some things that we came to notice when we started collecting our data with our grip and when we started kind of i mean you'd figure this well, out the biggest a long thing is, time is, ago like, but something Ethan yeah. and I talked about the other night was that um, in the last year, um, he really has understood like the golf swing a lot better because we talk a lot about it and I'm mm. really getting more knowledge. It's not easy right. to understand this no, stuff, no. but once you get it, then <laughs> it not. like is able to like break it down to a simpler form. So now like um, we were talking about how the pros in the last podcast could improve 25 to 30% approximately. And now he, he was watching golf and he's like, <laughs> I can now pinpoint I, every, like the things that you're saying with those percentages, yeah. how they can make it better. And once you get it, anybody can actually get to a point where they're like, oh, they could do that a little you, bit you better. Can get picky. Right. You can get picky. You can and it's like, not that it's like nitpicking to a point where it's like impossible to actually like, um, you know, like we'll say, introduce that to your golf swing and maintain yeah. it. It's like, if you understand the actual process of like right. why it's happening, how it relates to our simple process, then it's something that, you know, anybody can again, like do or learn. Yeah. It's funny. Like everybody, everybody thinks, Oh, they're like the best players in the world, the PGA tour players, um, and the live players now too, um, <laughs> which right. is a controversial take and we'll get to live a little bit. Um, but everybody thinks, Oh, like they're the best players. Like they don't need to change anything. Like they've already got it. It's like, no, they could improve. Everyone's can always, get better. the struggle is always ongoing with golf. Yeah. Anytime you reach a goal, you're going to want to try to improve that in a certain right. way. Unless you're literally that guy that can hit every single shot perfectly, which again, show me that guy. But it, I mean, Doesn't day to day, yeah. everything changes. You might have like the round of your life and then you go out thinking, Oh, I got this. And then you have the worst round of your life, right? which I had to happen to me. I mean, so. I mean <laughs> it happens with the tour players all the time. Right. And that's why they have coaches and they're always kind of trying to improve their swings. And when we were talking about the other day, I was talking about Rory and I'm like, okay, yeah, he did good. I mean, won the FedEx cup. I'm not taking anything away from Rory, but there was a couple of things I saw on his swing and we've talked about it in previous episodes where mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, he could do this and this like a sure. little bit better, right? Like right. he could push pull a little bit quicker. His uh, trail arm could kind of maybe bend just a little earlier just to keep his it's hands more of the more bending in front of, of the trail arm. But, yeah. but he uses that for um, his downward force, like in the downswing to allow him to compress more. But yeah. the idea is that it's a kind of a tricky transition in the swing then like if you get a little bit over the top of it it's going hard hard left and right. if you get a little bit underneath of the plane then it's like you're going to hit big blocks and he's gotten better at controlling it but what it comes down to in my opinion more so is his wedge game mm. like that's where he needs to really focus in my opinion is just like from 125 yards and in and just really just hone it. in, like stop moving your feet, <laughs> yeah. stay flat, like flat footed, control your claws better. Right. Don't use your wrists really much. Just try to like keep the club low and low in the backswing and follow mm -hmm. through and stick the finish good. Yeah. And I think if he actually eliminated the push pull with most of his short game shots, because of how far he hits it already, I mean, he can hit it hundred yards without having to actually pull. Like mm -hmm. he can almost feel like he's taking a quarter to quarter swing. And just change the different wedge, maybe right? Maybe get a gap twist, wedge and like control twist, your maybe, yeah. spin in a different way. Right. And I think that that would help his game evolve a little bit more. Because um, obviously from the tee to green, I mean, he's hitting the ball 
pretty much as good as anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's. I mean, like we said, we're, we're being like we're being up picky. to like uh, 150 yards. We'll say correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I was watching some of his wide shots. I'm like, eh, man, like he could. Yeah, he could. There's there's always spots where people can improve, and that's kind of the whole point of everything that we're gonna kind of talk about is that we've really broken it down into a science. Like right. we have tested, we've collected the data. Yeah, that's why we have our smart grip, and mm-hmm. we'll eventually have that available to everybody. But um, the information that we received when we were doing that is kind of the theme of what the clause and effect became because now well, everything I, is one of the biggest based on like, that. changing things for me was um, I went in and I actually measured like um, players from the 1950s to current. Right. And I looked at who won the most tournaments, like majors and regular tour events. Mm-hmm. And I analyzed what grip type they had mm-hmm. and then how much they used their hands and arms versus their body. Right. And right. what I came to realize is that. Pretty much all the guys that won the most tournaments all had a neutral to strong grip and were using their body a little bit less. Or it was like there was never the side more of the weaker grip with more body rotation. There was only a few that had a decent career. Um, But it's not like the new modern way that they're doing it. It was like like when you look at Arnold Palmer, that's one of them right there. Right. Gary Player had a strong grip and almost a bowed left wrist at the top. (laughs) And that's why he he basically like walked through his shot Mm -hmm. was to actually keep the momentum of the heel leading the toe. Oh. So he literally did that on purpose. (laughs) Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, getting back to it, though, the idea is that we when we looked at the parameters, um, current and old, as far as like where the club was going to be, it didn't matter the grip type right. or the swing type. They were all in the same, like, we'll say like little like windows right. or envelopes. The envelopes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it's right, like right. the club's not going to be a lot different. I mean, we're talking, you know, a few degrees, less than five mm-hmm. or like inches, you know, and yeah. would change. It's like it's but it's so minimal. And that's what we did is we collect a lot of data. Mm-hmm. And then through our teaching, too, we realized like, you know, over the years, like what is really going yeah. on? And then between it all, it's like. Now we have this actual, well, you know, correct yeah, system. Yeah, basically what we did is we like basically had all the information that we were seeing with our lessons and everything, everything we were doing with that, our students. Yeah, that drove now, me to like try to figure out my own process. Correct. Like upon, because I had a lot of the um, modern things for teaching, like video and censoring with mm-hmm. the body and stuff like that. But the problem was that it was my language I was speaking to my students and it was just too kind of all over the place because yeah. it's like I'd watch like a video of some instructor on YouTube that morning. Yeah. It's like, oh, I like what he said, how he said it. But then like down the road, I'd watch a video basically explain the same thing, but in a different way. And then my students like, hey, are you changing up like what we were talking about? It's like, oh, I just learned this new like language in a sense that right. made more sense to me. Right. And I just accidentally like said it to you that way. Yeah. But it's like then I just had to realize it's like come up with your own like formula for right. the swing that's concrete, simple, and it's like structured. And that's the thing where it's yes, like, very there's structured. not all these options, like in a sense, or like these different ways right. to navigate through it. It's like, no, this is really like, this is what it has to be. And then we have like simple, fun ways to learn it. Correct. Cause I, that's what I just started doing teaching was gamify, gamify it. it. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With my students, like Correct. challenge them to like a 50 yard shot and like close to the pen and like just trying to get like that down. And then it's like, then you can analyze what you're actually doing. Mm-hmm. Opposed to just sitting there trying to sit there and wrap, you know, swings without the ball, right. which, which we'll have those too. I mean, but it's just, but it's like, those are minimal and those are in the very beginning. But stages. what you said, I mean, it all goes back to the language. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like we're, all, we're creating a language yeah. of like how to communicate, not only like with like user to golf club, but it's like student to um, or coach to student, right? right? Like if you wanted to actually learn how to become a coach, mm-hmm. you could watch this our archive video. Yeah, this is like, the best thing. This honestly. isn't just for oh hey, like I'm trying to improve my swing. It's hey, I might want to like teach golf someday. Take like, a you co- could use take this. a coach like me. That's yeah. I mean, I, I changed my methodology probably four or five times. Right. I mean, I understood the stack until the golfing oh, machine. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, and then just came up like just watching Hank Haney and Butch Harmon and stuff like that. And just like taking all of it. In. I mean, yeah. used to watch YouTube videos every morning for hours before work, mm-hmm. listening to everyone. Right. And then finally it like made sense from just a random few. And then it's like, okay, this is what is all in common. Correct. And it's like, but the language is different. So then I just, again, formulated the language, but mm-hmm. the idea yeah. too, there's with the language that we're talking about, you're going to, for a lot of people that have been researching the swing um, over time or like have been taking lessons, the, these terminologies are in a sense going to all be something you've heard probably. Mm-hmm. But the way that we put them all together makes yes. way more sense Correct. because a lot of people, they talk about like hinge, but they don't understand like push pull. Like they just talk about hinge. And right. they're like, you just take your wrist and go like this. It's like, wait, uh, what? That's vertical. Like, I mean, but like, like they don't like, realize yeah. like what's going really on or like how to twist the club or um, how to set the club. 
like these different things are all like one sided when they are taught. Right. So you're thinking, oh, I just got to do this and I got it. It's like, no, we got to blend these things. And, and all that's really designed to formulate your like swing plane, like your 45 Correct. degree, the 45 like road degree map, plane. Right? right. Right. And that's really um, the theme of everything that we're kind of talking about um, when it comes to kind of constructing the swing is you're just trying to build this like 360 degree, yeah, it's a 360 degree, degree like circle right. around a bent forward axis, which right. is how much you bend forward, which should be approximately 45 degrees. Right. And then how you swing on that is by everything that you're, we're going to talk about. And you can make alterations. Like if you want to like, small though, you minimal. small, like <laughs> you can go like to the outside part of the envelope, but then you have to understand you have to how to get back. back to the inside. Exactly. But like, it comes down to three main points. Mm -hmm. It comes down to your takeaway position mm -hmm. and the shaft being parallel to the target line, a certain reference, yep. right? Should be very close to mm -hmm. pre-impact. Same thing. The distance, the handle is. Um, relative from like where like the takeaways, it's going to be like stretched back more mm -hmm. at pre impact. It's going to be more forward, right, like closer right. to the ball. And then at post impact, the shaft gets again back to parallel to that same target line. So right. it's like those are the three angles that you have to get right with like the envelope. Right. And exactly. then what you do outside of that, the finish is really more of a product of everything that happened prior. Correct. But so basically, we'll just say when you go back from like your takeaway to your half, three quarter full back swing, and then how you lag it back to that pre impact is right. going to determine. Pretty much like what's going to happen to post. And, in and that's why we're through. always using like the mini yeah. club too, because so, we're always trying to just show like right. demonstrations like, hey, this is, I if, mean, if, if you we, think about like, just imagine this. So like mm -hmm. we have the club like this, right? It's like, if it starts like this, straight, like pointing straight forward, right? Once it goes to the takeaway, we get here. Mm -hmm. We go in the backswing. It works around that plane, comes back, it's back to parallel, same thing. Mm -hmm. And then when it releases... Back to parallel, the exact same thing. <laughs> right. If from a down the line perspective, um, if you drew like a circle basically around like where your hands in the club were at the takeaway, like right here, from again a down the line standpoint, like this. Mm -hmm. So it's like I can't really do it in my chair, but, <laughs> but like if you get it here, it's like draw a circle here, and yeah. at those three points, the handle and the hands get exactly back to the same thing, and they stay inside that circle. And that's the thing where you look at like that's that's a, something that's, that's not really well, talked about a lot because one of the biggest everybody thinks so. Yeah, the hands is that like inward some of my worst students i ever had like the ones that like they really just can't hit the golf ball um you know they're not like you know coordinating golf in a sense yes. or in general but but the <laughs> idea is that that was the only way for me to guarantee they could hit the golf ball right. was making sure that when they set the club back in their takeaway the shaft was perfectly parallel to like the target line mm -hmm. and then coming down it's like it's basically staying just outside your toe line too, right if you think of it that way another reference but um it's like here, and then if the handle like pulled in a little bit, let's say in the downswing to pre-impact, and then the club went this way, they would shank it off the toe. <laughs> right. Or if they got too inward in the takeaway like this and not pushing down, out, and away against the handle like this to get the perfect lever, then they would come into it and they would, again, shank it off the toe. That's a very, very common thing that you see a right. lot with with um, players, and we, I see this a lot when people come in for lessons with me, is that the first move, their hand just pulls straight in. Right. They don't or they have that. passive hands in a sense, and yes. then they're trying to use their shoulders, shoulders. to initiate their backswing. And, Which is, and honestly, you, I mean... Your shoulders work as a um, a product of like what your hands and arms are doing. Meaning, meaning like if I go back, if I have completely passive hands and I just turn my shoulders, the club is not going to do anything. It's not going <laughs> to hinge. It's not going to twist. Right. And then from there, you could activate a wrist action to do something. Right. But commonly, it's not going to work. So it's like when you go back, the hands in the club have to start going back. And the first thing that we start with is the pushing down, out, and away with mm. the like the radio push pressure. Right. Right. Like that. Um, idea of about yeah. like the laser beam idea with the push pull pressure, like through the handle of the club, mm. like that right there, going back, we'll say like dead straight for the first foot of the backswing. Mm. Like that's what should initiate right, right. the backswing is pushing down. Cause as soon as you push down, the club head will levitate above the ground. So it becomes weightless. And all that you have to do is if you just keep pushing straight back, there is no resistance at all. We talked about this a little bit earlier where we were saying if you draw a line on the base of the top of your hand. Like the top, at, yeah, the top of the handle even, you could just right. say that, yep. And then by the time you get to the takeaway position, the handle should, um, it'll actually about halfway through from the address to the takeaway. So we'll say like a half of the quarter backswing. Mm -hmm. The handle will drop approximately two inches. Right. And then by the time it gets back to the full quarter position, it'll come up just a little bit, but the shaft will be, I would say, either perfectly in line with or approximately one inch below that line. And if you look right. at tour players, yes. they're all doing that. Correct. And this by the beach ball drills were so helpful for a lot of people. We got a lot of really good feedback on those beach ball drills because what it did is once you had the visual of pushing the beach ball down in a way 
from your body, there's a lot of like pressure that needs to be exerted to get that beach ball under that water. We're trying and to that achieve that pressure, tauntness, like we exactly, say with the forearms. That exact pressure is what's being applied to the handle, right. which is why when you say what you just said there, the handle is going lower than where it started because that is basically your dunking the beach ball in the water right or keeping so, it like submerged basically <laughs> well, yeah yeah for sure yeah. one of the mm -hmm. things like we want people to realize with like this beach ball idea and everything is that when it comes down to the golf swing like one of, what are the two most important parts technically impact is the most important because that was that determines where the golf ball goes right right and then post impact is a product of impact mm. so when you look at like the impact is the main key, but then its product of what it did is also very important because then you can analyze it Correct. and then tell what the problem is. Because if the club head is going left or inside of the handle too much coming through at post impact, then we know that we're coming in from outside in, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Or if we get stuck under the plane too much and the club goes way too far out, right. it's like then we're losing connection of the arms to the body as well. Right. So it's like we just have to make sure that we understand like where post impact has to be and the idea of the being shaft wise and club face wise like back to parallel to the toe line mm -hmm. that's it but Correct. again then we're just making more sense out of why we take the club back and the takeaway to that parallel position right we get it back to the parallel position so it can get back to that parallel position and even in that to get to that parallel position you almost have to feel like you're swinging like to the right of parallel and right. follow through because right we the, talk about the, this a lot with the 45 talk about, yeah. of the 45 <laughs> right so like when we lever the club head back of the handle like this and we're coming in this is the lag the club is naturally going to have like a spring effect to release right, right. Yep. so when we think about like uh your toe line and your target line being parallel here we're talking about a 45 degree angle so here's parallel 45 degrees to let's say like the right for a right-handed golfer to the left for a left-handed golfer yes of the target line like trying to actually release the club on that angle um, for most golfers, it works really well because naturally it counteracts how much the club is kicking left and actually stabilizes it mm. because most people don't realize when they get lag actually yeah. that there is a lot of forces going on. And if, and if you can really harness them, then you're good, but you have to exaggerate it so much. I used to tell mm. some of my students to feel like they were swinging like 70 degrees right of their target yes. and they looked at me and they're like i'm gonna kill someone on the tee box <laughs> yeah, i swear i'm exactly. like i'm like just don't move and focus in on just your club head going to that point right. and they'd hit it and it would literally go right at the flag right and it'd be like a nice 10 yard draw and they're like how is that possible it's like that's how much you're still actually letting the club go left or it's, like taking it outside or like it's you a know. scary thing when there's a five or ten thousand dollar simulator sitting on the ground right there sure, sure, sure. launch monitor it's well, like the key thing without and they're well, like so, wait so i don't here, want to be responsible so a couple for that. of things with that too when you <laughs> swing on the 45 one of the most common reasons that people shank when they do that like hitting it off the heel because the club is moving outward too much is because of a lack of maintaining posture mm. so basically their hips are moving inward which causes the club to even be shoved more out of way and then the club can't pivot because the hand's going like this so if we maintain oh. posture when we're trying to release on the 45, you can still get the gear effect. So you're not going to actually hit so the ball So this is the why heel. the anchored ankles but yeah, that's, locking that's the it. legs. If your sternum too is too far to the right and you try to do this, you're going to bottom out behind the ball. Mm -hmm. So that's where like the presets that we're talking about with the body that we're going to launch in the archive, like how to lean left, how to pre-close, how to set the handle forward, all these static dynamics. Right. Which then allows to do the in-swing dynamic. Got it, got it. Because it's just basically, like you said, it's supporting what's right. about to happen. Right. Because like, we want to move the minimal amount, but correct. support these positions, yeah. right? And it's like, they get really easy if you're not worried about, again, like, just swaying, basically, is one of the most common. And Very then, like, common. going in and out with the body. You get those two right, which is going to be through our process of how we explain, like, your address position with anchored ankles, locked legs, like, all these things we're going to go correct. through. Um, but it's like the building blocks and then you can do these things pretty simply right. if you get walked through it. But just that's the problem is that no one's walking everyone through from the very beginning. Yes. Just like holding Hold and your holding hand. your hand. Yes. Right. We always talk about that. Not in a bad way, but honestly, like we have to look at it from a standpoint because of how hard like golf is to understand for most people is that we're teaching a child that has, has no idea at all of right. what's going on. And yep. they might be uh -huh. 50, 60 years old. Right. Okay. But that's how it has to be. Correct. Because this is how hard it is. You have to be walked through just like when you learn to read. Yeah. Right. Like it's got to be that simple and no one's made it that simple. <laughs> and, and that's where it goes back to the whole like language, right? It's like the golf club has certain commands that need to be sent to it in order for it to move in the proper way. Right. Right. And that language has never been broken down. Nobody's ever like created a language of how right. to get this club to do the same thing every time 
guaranteed. And that's right. what the claw code is going to be. Explains and the club it's going first. To be everything. Yes. Then, then the, the body. body and the hand, or the hands and arms and then the body. <laughs> Correct. The body comes last opposed to first. Yeah. The only body that will really come first is just the presets. In the I mean, the claws right. is like, that's hands though. Correct. And the presets, yeah, there's like, understand those basics of like turn and tilt, which Correct. is cool how it's like, once you understand them at setup in the preset, you're already presetting the right direction that you're supposed to go Correct. to the top. And so your chances of basically getting the move right with matching up these three positions, takeaway, pre-impact, post-impact, yes. your chances of getting that right is like exponentially like increased. Like right. it's ridiculous. Like right. if you have one variable sway or you're not doing the proper, you know, lever back, the lag, or the release, Right. it, it can get really crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because And your mind spirals, too, and you have no idea. Honestly, if you don't go through this process, to be honest, you don't know really how to pinpoint your issues when you're on the course and start stuff true. starts getting real. Yeah. Especially in the beginning parts. It's, it's true. like people are hearing all these things, like the worst golfers, honestly, and it may not say that like the worst playing golfers, but um, the guys that will say that have like the worst, like, um, cycle, cycle, like, like, or the cycle yeah. of craziness going on in their head <laughs> yeah, right. is the guy that just watches like every video or like it like reads into every program wants yeah. to know it all it's like no 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 you don't need it because all. all these programs are so different right it's like you have to learn one and stick with it and then it. the other programs that you see you might see similarities of what they're talking about and be like oh that makes sense now yeah. though but i don't need to go to that it's like i have my own personal like process already like Correct. written out for me. All I have to do is abide by it. Exactly. And the more I practice it, which is all written too, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm going to get as good as I can as much as possible. Correct. So, but it's more of the, again, the guarantee thing. Cause again, watching all these videos on Ugh. YouTube, you only go to the range. It's like, you don't even really know where to start. And, you know? and, I, and I really feel like the problem is now too, is that because of all of the information that's out there now, because of social media and TikTok and just swiping the screen and just mm -hmm. like endlessly scrolling, you're endlessly like getting all these different languages and it's all like these you got different like, ways. You got like a hundred voices like, in your you head doing? then. It's just yeah. like, it's complete chaos. Right, exactly. Like, so we have to minimize this. We're just going to create like an infinite scroll that's just the language that you need to understand. And the thing is too... And we, we talk about this a lot is that we're not trying to like, this isn't a new language that we're trying to invent in terms of it's not. Um, okay. One sec. Let me redo that. So the thing is, is that this isn't a language that isn't understandable in terms of it's relatable because the tour players are doing what we're saying. Sure. Well, that's basically more of, so like you could say it's validating our points. Correct. Um, but I'm telling you, I've measured everything and broken it down. Yes. And it, this is really what it comes this down it. to. Right. If you're we've hitting, collected the data, like the ball does what we want it to do if we're doing what we're doing with the well, hand, I, the I've also the club tested this myself Correct. with playing and practicing is that Same. I would go to the range and I would really focus in on getting these parameters right. And it got scary how good it was. Like right. I could hit like 20 um, yard shots with a sand wedge and I could hole out like four or five in a row by doing the exact same thing right. with the club positioning. And right. it was like, it gets to a point where it's like almost easy. Right. But the only thing was for me was I didn't have the time to actually work on it as much because I was teaching so much at that time. It Correct. was more about just, okay, that's it though. Right. And then I used on every single lesson. Right. And right. then my people started getting really good. And then it's like, understand though, like what it's all about. And again, it comes down to those, those three points and you know, yeah. just understand the basic mechanics in a simple language. It's gotta be like, Very a, simple. like one way. And that's, you just learn that and everything else you can just kind of throw out the window in a sense that yeah. you've ever learned or thought of or whatever. Right, exactly. Like everybody thinks that the golf swing is more complicated than it really is. And the the reason that I think some of these coaches that are talking a lot about the body have had success because they are simplifying it. But the problem is that they're just talking about the body. Right. And then it's like, okay, yeah, like the flexion extension and the squatting and um, things like that, but it's only like one little piece of the puzzle. Here, here's the <laughs> biggest problem is that um, when it comes to the body movements, the body moves in a way that the hands and arms are moving relative to it. Like the hands and arms have a bigger or a greater influence on the body than the body itself. Right. So what it means is that if I lever the club back properly like this, like, like I'm push pulling in the takeaway and I allow the club head to come back up and around me like this, my shoulders are naturally going to want to stay centered and rotate properly. Right. But if you take this like same person and you say, try to turn your shoulders back, like get your trail shoulder working back away from like the lead shoulder or away from target. However, right. and you're going to be tilted like 45 degrees 
and then you're like, oh, okay. And then like you got your club here with your claws and they're just like static. And then it's just like, here's my move. Like it doesn't matter if, or like, if you don't Or they'll just this. preset them with like perfect flexion extension. And it's like, right. okay, yeah, that's one piece. But then what do I do from there? It's uh, it's the three point system with what exactly. we're talking about. It's three like point take system. away, pre impact, post impact. You get the club right there, control the club first. And that's why we're too also going to introduce the quarter to quarter swing to you first. Mm. We're going to walk you through the baby steps of the actual swing. Then we're going to go half to half, then three quarter, three quarter. But by learning this, you're covering every shot in golf that you're going to also ever have. Right. Which one of the most overlooked things is like the shorter shots in golf. Right. Like the short um, sided buried rough, you know, thing. And I've seen instructors say you should use a nine iron or a seven iron and try to bump it out of there. And honestly, no. the chance of doing that and getting it close no is like you might get it out of there all the time, but probably more in times than that, you're probably gonna go over the green and be in the other rough. But right. the idea is with my students, I would take a sand wedge and I would understand how you just a little bit open and you're just trying to like basically just slide the lean edge across the ground, like scrape it and like leave it in the ground mm. to allow the ball to pop up. But I'm taking, when you look at a quarter to quarter swing, I was taking like a quarter of a quarter to a quarter of a quarter. Right. And that's it. And like, all you have to yeah. do is just push down hard impact and the ball pops up perfect every time. That I, I, one of the first times that I actually saw somebody do that like perfect was when we went, when we did that lesson with Jax at the property. Yeah. Yeah. And shout out Jax if you're listening to this. Yeah. Um, he's like one of the best. He's like one of these, my best student I've Canada. ever had as far as plane wise he's, and mechanically. He's, like, he's ridiculous. Really good. Yep. Um, and watching it first, I mean, I've seen his swing a lot, but watching it in person was like, whoa. It's crazy, but he did that swing like exactly what you're saying with that short game, where like quarter of a quarter, and then just like punched at it and just stuck the heel like right in the ground and thumped the trailing just edge. in front of the ball, and, of course. But yeah, exactly. But he just like really just thumped the ground perfectly, and it was like the shortest move I've ever seen. But just like the amount That's of control, how to, like he imagine had. how you're gonna like in golf. There's a lot of shots where you really only have to project the ball approximately like one two feet, maybe right. right? So how do you do that and create spin? Right. You can't do it without any spin, or I mean, I'm sorry, you can't do that without any speed, right. and you don't want to be using a club with less loft. Yeah. It's like, use more loft, create more speed in a short amount of time, but it's controlled because we're preset. We're not moving the body even at all. Right. It's just literally like a little bit of a twist of the toe back, pushing that, like push-pull, a little bit to initiate, yeah. a little bit of letting the toe go back of the heel, and then we just push right back down the heel to that quarter of a quarter follow-through, right. and that's it. Right. And then, so in learning golf or warming up, it's really how you should just do it. Yeah. Like you break the quarter swing down to four segments, right? Yeah. Quarter of a quarter, half a quarter, three quarter of a quarter, and then you got a quarter. Right. And you start off with your sand wedge. Now True. you've just covered basically all of your shots from 50 yards and in. Because if you can't Depending do on that, your setup, like right. you said, if you can't do that, there's new of no business You're, trying to do You got to build the foundation of the swing in the back stroke or the back swing and in the follow through. Right. Then we go to half to half. Then we go three quarter, three quarter. Right. But you're always matching up your swing. And that's the best way to basically like get all these um, levers and everything like to where they're perfectly working and using. Meaning that if you take a half back swing and you go to a three quarter finish, it's going to change the gear effect a little bit. Mm. So if you, if you switch, which if you know how to counteract that, which we will explain that, but. Right. You can do that, but it really matching your swing lengths is a really simple way to get a very consistent output of the ball every single time the same Can way. you go a little bit more into that gear effect thing, what you just said, of how does that change the gear effect if you go from a... If you have a shorter like backswing a, and you go to a bigger finish, uh -huh. there's going to be a chance that the release is going to be delayed a little bit more. Okay. Because when you if you think about it, like we've talked about before that we want to try to stop it post-impact for all swing lengths, technically, yes, right? We call that sticking the finish. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to talk about there is three ways with the different grit or the different release types that you can stick the finish, which mm. we'll get into that in the archive videos. But sticking the finish just means, yeah, you're trying to get the club to stop at a certain point mm. in, in the, like the follow through. Right. right. So, again, if I take the club shorter back and go more through, it's going to elongate like the finish to where or the release where, let's say, you might hit a little bit more of a block like as a 10 C, mm. right? But if everything works out good and you still try to stick it at a quarter from a half back swing and it goes to three quarter, I don't know. I mean, you know, again, it's just like, there's a little bit of... So a good um, example of that would be like Lee Trevino where he took it back really short and then just punched the just heel fouled, through yeah, yeah. in a huge high finish and just hit like punch cuts. Like right. Basically the whole entire, his whole career, well, what basically. Did, I guess the best way to put it would be is like for that, if you have a really short back swing, like say you go to a half or let's just say even three quarter... And then you're always um, like, how do you go from like your half finish to your three quarter and your full finish? I believe that all they're doing is just using more of a push pull action with the wrist to let the club's energy re-kick back at them more. Mm. And then their body's going to naturally tilt more and turn more. 
because of that momentum. Okay. And that's really it. But they're still all trying to release the club down here at the same point. Like every single tour player, every grip type is all pretty much the exact same with these parameters with the three units, right? Correct. Which is why they're 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 doing that because they're really just trying to keep their sternum like so stable and just really keep those elbows locked. Well, by and just by like, doing these three points, that's what keeps your sternum locked. Because look at the club's it. going here and here. Correct. What am I doing? Yeah, I'm nothing. not moving. Like yeah. I don't have to move. Right. Yeah. Everybody is going to be blown away when they realize how little they have to actually move in the golf swing. Right. Like it's going to blow their mind. Yeah. Yeah. Comes and down it's going to be 10, 20, 30 it's going to be hard like to said. kind of like wrap your head around it first. And we're totally kind of empathetic to that. And that's why we have our discord and we have open communication with everybody going through the program because um, there's going to be some things in there where you're like, wait, I'm not using my body with a chip shot or a pitch shot or right, right. And I'm not rotating. And we, we talk about exactly why, like we're always giving the yeah, why. All, it's going to be very right? like structured. Correct. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's, it's very to, simple though. It's, it's just, it breaks it down. Like when you're not moving right. in swing as much, it's because you're preset and you don't have as big of a backswing. Correct. You don't have to. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll tell you when you when your body needs to start moving, this is when. Right. This is how. Yeah. And yeah, the body again, like again, and breaks down from that 10, 20, 30% rule from the strong grip, neutral and weak. Correct. Like exactly. how much you need to use your body. Yes. Right. right. Exactly. And um, I think people are going to realize that, well, because when you first learn it, uh, we always recommend kind of starting with a stronger grip um, just because it kind of builds the foundation and it really allows you to create what we call the pivot points. Uh, the pivot points are a little bit easier to create when you have a preset in the strong grip, because what it does is we like we used the analogy last um, podcast where it's like you go um, in to get like your car worked on. You're putting your body like up on jacks and then you can work on your hands and arms and do the maintenance. And you're really just creating the foundation for because your, the your axis is through. going to be able to stay more centered because Correct. you're already preloaded you're where pre-loaded. you have to be to support impact. Correct. So then it's like, OK, I'm already here. Now all I have to do is just like build the perfect takeaway. And then that creates basically a pivot point for the club to transition up to the top properly. And then now all you have to do is just understand where you're connecting that kind of um, pivot point to the follow through and like how you're connecting those kind of, it's like you're taking it's, like two it's, it's things like, like this. Think about it like, um, like two when circuits. You, like some pros that might like shift in their back swing a little bit, like they might move a couple inches off the ball and then they shift back. Those lateral actions relative to keeping your um, sternum and your, you know, axis like completely centered. Mm -hmm. Like, in my opinion, that is basically more consistent because trying to shift and do the lateral motions really messes with the timing of how the club's supposed to be at these three points. And um, with what we're going to explain is that when you preset, you create the wider takeaway. Like, you can go lower in the takeaway and never Mm. hit the ground because you're already angled. So it naturally creates like an upward and um, like an angle in the backswing Mm. and a downward descent in the downswing. So you already support your angle of attack. Mm. Then you can work on the like whatever amount of twist you need for the grip type to get the toe back of the heel properly in the backswing to where then you come through and you can thump the heel with the leading edge or the trailing edge. Mm. Depending but it's on like, how it's high just, or low you want to go, right? Right, but mm. we're just minimizing the lateral movements and you don't need that. Like it's not like you need that extra like momentum laterally to help you in any way. It mm. only disrupts the gear effect. Got you. Right, right. Of yeah. these three points. And once and that's the thing where once people understand, like, oh, that's my end destination, like that's where I'm trying to get to at the follow through, then you're all you're gonna do is try to get to that position as quick as possible. So it's like, okay, you're probably right. gonna Which means that your arms gonna, and hands in your club have to basically be able to pass your body. Correct. Because if your body is, you know, leading the whole way then and like the arms and hands it. don't catch up, then you're delaying stuff it. gets really real. That's right. how you shank the ball, like <laughs> off the hosel. Right. That's how you can get some like huge, you know, blocks and just Correct. the worst thin shots of your life. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So so this is exciting. We're we're gonna start <laughs> shooting these videos tomorrow. Um they're very fresh in your mind, I can tell, which is um, well, I'm, we're, we're super excited. I mean, you can tell that you kind of have a really good understanding. I'm well, just I wrote gonna this be, whole thing yeah. about like, you know, <laughs> it started about eight years ago. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, you can tell that it's kind of, it's getting to the point where, um, we're ready to, we're ready to get this out there. Like we were originally going to put it in the grip. We're going to do that eventually, but right now we're just going to do the videos and we want to help people as much as possible now. Like yep. if we waited to put it in the grip, it would take way too long. And we want to help people now. Like golf needs it. Everybody needs It'll help it. everyone that goes through our program because then when you get the training club with the technology in it, Correct. it's just going to give you a more precise way to monitor yes. like what you're doing Correct. when you're practicing and make sure it's perfect. Correct. It's basically our way to be with you all the time. Holding your hand. Right. And it's yes. even better in a sense than the live person because it's going to be an AI coach. Yes, exactly. Which has um, never been done before. And that's right. um, something that we're working on kind of behind the scenes right now. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff coming. I mean, we're, we're working on 
uh, trying to do like some merch. Uh, we yep. had kind of a debacle with our <laughs> hat manufacturer. I won't get too much into that. Uh, but um, we're gonna be launching our, we're gonna be launching more TikTok. of our um, claw brand now. Yeah, exactly. Um, like we're wearing. Stuff, like, like if you look, we got our OG hats yep. on. This is like when we first started claw. Uh, this is the red logo. The logo is now orange. Uh, the just like that. This, yeah, this right back here. here. Uh, but our hats are. I'm going to be similar to this. Um, we're going to incorporate better. our little golf ball yeah. dimples. Um, and yeah, we got a bunch of exciting stuff we're doing um, with NFTs. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure out how to kind of create a platform where people can do golf lessons. But then also like if you buy a golf lesson, you get like an NFT and um, the amount of time that you put into like watching the videos, you can gain tokens, which you can use for golf lessons and a lot of cool stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff's going on behind the scenes. I mean, this is... Um, like one portion of um, our company, Claw Revolution, but Claw Revolution's kind of uh, a big company that um, we're working on a lot of things. But um, yeah, tomorrow is a really big day for us. So um, yeah, we're going to just kind of wrap it up here. Yep. I think we've really talked about a ton of information today. Um, that was awesome. Like I kind of just got a little bit of a front row seat to you, just kind of you were in your zone and it's fun for me to just kind of sit back and just watch you kind of, when you're in your zone talking about the swing because um yeah that's that's what people need um so i just kind of you know, it's like rebuild it, or like bringing back like these hidden hieroglyphics that were buried <laughs> yeah. thousands of years ago yeah, that somebody exactly. figured out right they figured it out back in like the and all they want to do is like 30s. they laugh at humanity because of like they're like teasing Gosh, them like <laughs> right like it was they had it figured out in like 20s and 30s and Harry Varden and all those guys. Remember that video we first did where I was like, right. golf swing is 90% hands and arms and got ripped apart for that. But right. hey, you're going to see. They had to though because their equipment sucked so bad. It's like if they yeah. try to just use their body, it's they like no the chance. hickory shaft ain't kicking. That ain't kicking. <laughs> no, no. Like, they understood the gear effect totally. better than anybody. And now gear effect is kind of, everybody thinks of gear effect as just like, oh, where it hits on the face and the gear effect of the claw. It's true. But that's but a the, thing. But, it's but, the, but the handle has a gear effect. The claws have a gear effect. And those two together right there controls where the club head gear effect is. It's like basically putting a circle around the club head, a circle around your hands and your handle. Yes. And at those three points, the takeaway, yes. pre-impact and post, everything is in like harnessed in the circle. And then the club head has to move from the, like, the pre-impact back down from where it started at address to impact here and then back up to post to post. Correct. So it has to go down on the plane, but it's on the 45. It's not straight down like a, like <laughs> like a hammer, axe. right? Yeah. It's like it's on a 45 degree angle with, it's like a sideways hammer like that. Think of it that Correct. way, like you're yeah. chopping wood on a 45. Yeah, I always tell people like, imagine that there's a like a nail sticking out of like the inside part of the golf ball and you're just trying to take the heel of your golf club and imagine that's the hammer and just yeah, it's hammer like, it's that like nail. It's like sticking right out of here and just like, bam. Correct, right. exactly. Right. So, yeah. Thanks everybody. Yep, uh, thank this you. was this was a great episode. Um, really exciting, exciting stuff coming. We appreciate all the support. Um, yeah, tell your friends, tell everybody. Like we're 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 fixing golf instruction. It needs to be fixed. Um, again, that's not bashing anybody, but uh, we have collected the data that tells us that what's actually happening isn't what's being talked about right now. That's why we created this company. It's why we're right. doing everything that we're doing here. Exactly. That's why we have our social medias and we've created our Discord. If you're not on our Discord, I don't know what you're doing with your life. <laughs> get on there. Get your free swing assessment. Yeah, that's Start the thing is, might game. as well go for free and just like see what we have to say Try about your out. swing. Yeah, yes. it doesn't hurt anything. Exactly. And, we'll give and you're you going to get advice. all the information. You're going to get all the leaks, um, all of the teasers for our merch, for our for claw code. Uh, for NFTs, mm -hmm. you name it. Everything's going down in the Discord. So get over there. Links are in the bottom. Links for everything. Jonathan's art. If you look behind you here. Yeah. Right John, here. One of it's Jonathan's Pe most famous pieces, yeah. uh, Pebble Beach. Yeah. Um, yeah. You need to pick up some of that. So uh, all the links are in it's the on bottom. Johnny G Designs. Johnny G I Designs. Um, and yeah, thanks again for all the support. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.